right? So there's lots of key uh, reasons here. One of them is very simple. It's the only star we can actually study up close. We can't send probes to other stars. Well, I guess we could, but it would they'd take a long time to get there. It takes light years to get to our nearest stars. So it'll take any you know, actual object much longer. Um, it has a huge impact on life on Earth. And so we should try to understand it because it affects our lives down here. Um, one of the reasons for that is that uh, the solar wind and other types of space weather can change um, the orbits of satellites. It can change satellite integrity and it can interfere with communications on satellites. And here in our you know, modern digital world, we really rely on um, our satellite communications. Something else that space weather can do is make it hard for astronauts and, you know, uh, you know, space travelers to be in space. And with lots of missions uh, planned to, for example, Mars, it would really be good to understand the entire solar environment, which stretches into the rest of our solar system, so that we can be ready to mitigate any of the risks that astronauts on, uh, you know, solar system missions would actually face. And it's not just about astronauts, it's also about making sure that our space probes are protected against the um, harshness of space. So lots of reasons to study the sun. All right, so you can learn more about this on uh, NASA's Parker Solar Probe website. Um, the Parker Solar Probe is one of the newest uh, things that we have out there to study the sun. And so it's, already taught us a lot more about solar wind and there's a lot more in store for Parker. Okay, so um, the sun is basically just a giant ball of plasma, right, with a core fusing uh, hydrogen into helium producing large quantities of energy. Uh, it's big and how big? About 109 times the radius of the earth, 330,000 times the earth's mass, and its density is pretty low. It's similar to Jupiter, similar to the density of water. So not exactly a high density object, um, but that's on average. It's more dense in its interior than it is at its exterior. And by mass, more than 90% of the sun is made of hydrogen and helium. Everything that's heavier, all the heavier elements are generated by uh, nuclear fusion. And so for the most part in the sun, it, the fusion process is hydrogen to helium. And everything else that we see around us, all the composition of, you know, the Earth's crust, all the metals, uh, the silicon, the carbon, oxygen, all these things are produced um, in supernova explosions. So not produced by the fusion processes in the sun. This was a question I got a while ago, so I thought I'd mention that here. Um, just as a review, the luminosity of the sun is the total amount of energy per second that it gives off if you could measure all of that in a huge sphere around the sun. So if I took a sphere, tiled it all with solar panels and counted up all the energy that hit all those solar panels in one second, um, then that would be the sun's luminosity, that amount of energy in that one second. And I don't think it's helpful as a um, analogy, but the total luminosity of the sun is equivalent to 10 billion megaton nuclear bombs per second. So, yeah, the sun is a lot better at producing high amounts of power than anything that we can do here on Earth. Um, we can measure the temperature of the sun. We already learned how to do this uh, using black body curves. So as a reminder, um, the spectrum that we measure from the sun has a lot of uh, dips from absorption in the solar atmosphere. So the, in the sun's own atmosphere. Uh, but if we fit this curve, with a smooth curve so that we can find the peak of the black body um, curve, then that turns out to be at 520 nanometers. If we plug that into our Wien's law solved for temperature, then we find that the temperature of the sun is 5,800 Kelvin. 